Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look at the Kurt Underbed OEM style custom gooseneck on a 2022 GMC Sierra 2500 HD. Now this is going to allow you to hook up to gooseneck trailers and as far as towing it's got quite a bit of capacity and your gross trailer weight rating is going to be 32,500 pounds so pretty heavy duty system for your truck. Now, you also have a weight rating of the downward pressure on here, your pin weight per se, and that's gonna be 8,125 pounds. So again, a pretty high number, that's gonna allow you to tow some pretty heavy loads. Now it does come with this two and five sixteenths goose ball, and it's pretty easy to load into place and unlatch. You can simply twist this top portion, and when you wanna lock it in place, pushing this tab down puts the balls out. So you can have it in any position here, just twist that and then once it's in place simply make sure that's there and you're locked in place now as far as storage goes some other underbed kits will allow you to flip these over and store them like your BMWs it's not the case here so you are gonna have to store this in somewhere in your truck whether you have a toolbox or in the cab now something that is nice is you do have a plug here so that way when you're not using it you can plug this up it looks nice and clean obviously keeps it nice and flat and keeps dirt debris and just rainwater or whatever else is in your bed from going underneath. Now you also have your safety loops here and they're spring loaded which is nice so that way it cinches it down and they sit in the actual lower rail of the bed so that way it's pretty flush here it's not sticking up much and that way you, when you're not having your fifth wheel or I'm sorry your gooseneck towing you still have all of your bed it's not going to hinder loading up your truck. Now underneath the truck, we can take a look at the components installed. And the great part about this system is it is multiple different pieces. So you have a left side and a right side bracket that's all held together. And it's nice having multiple pieces. And the reason being, it's easy to get these into place when you have so many things going on. You have a fuel tank and an exhaust in the way, and it's all pretty heavy. So having small multiple pieces was really nice for install. I was able to set some of these brackets up and kind of work as I went. And you can do this with one person. If you set aside an afternoon on a weekend, you could probably get this knocked out. And it's not terribly hard. There's no cutting except for, well, I should say, there's no cutting or drilling on the underside except for the holes that are gonna go through your bed. But as far as the rest of it, it's bolt-on installation. Speaking of installation, let's walk you through those steps right now and get your hitch installed. To begin our installation, we're going to first start by dropping our spare tire down. That's going to gain us a bunch of space while we're working underneath the truck. So now we're going to make our way a little past the rear pumpkin here. And you're going to see on this cross member, there's going to be a bracket that has a lot of electrical connections here. And so since we're gonna be putting our center section in this area, we're gonna remove this just to give us a little bit more space. So we have some 10 millimeter uh, nuts here that we should be able to remove. So now in front of our pumpkin here, I'm next to our uh, gas tank, our driver's side's over here. You're gonna see that there's going to be some 10 millimeters uh, that really just keep this wiring harness in place. And since we're gonna be raising up our underbed here, we're gonna wanna get this out of the way by removing these two 10 millimeters. So that's gonna allow us to move this out of the way and gain us a lot more access. Now during all of this installation, you're gonna to want to hold on to all your hardware as you may need it for reinstallation. So keep it in a safe place, and if you need to, you can organize them separately. That way you'll have them ready for when you need to put them back in. So now we're gonna be removing this heat shield here that lives above the axle. Now there's gonna be four 13 millimeter bolts. You're gonna have one here and one on the frame rail, and then there's also another one on the frame rail further back as well as that rear cross member. So just kind of follow it along and just follow the tabs and you should be able to see them up there. So you should have four of these. And once we remove this, we're actually not gonna reinstall it because our underbed's going to go here. So you can actually just set this aside. 
Now once you have your hardware out, it may seem like it's kind of stuck on there because there is this rubber coating here on the frame, so it might feel like it's stuck on there, but with those four out, this should come out pretty easy. Now next we're gonna be putting in our side plates that kind of sit over the fuel tank on the driver's side and the other one will live across from it. Now we're gonna be using carriage bolts. You're gonna see in the kit there's a longer one. We're gonna be using the inch and a half. So find the shorter ones and you're gonna to wanna to grab two of them for each side, so a total of four. And we'll just drop these in and get this in place. Now to determine which side these go on to make it a little bit easier, your driver's side here has one hole, whereas your passenger side actually has two on each. So make sure that you have the one with the single hole. This is gonna to face towards the front as this actually is accounting for the fuel tank. So just make sure you have this one ready to go on the driver's side. And then what we're gonna do is take our carriage bolts here and just drop these into place. Now we can lift this in place. So I'm gonna to attempt to get this slid over and these, you can see the weld nuts on here should kind of live on our frame rail um, or close to it. So let's just try to get this in position here. Now there is some wires here, so just make sure you're not catching on any of those. That looks to be just a little rubber hose there. And that seems to be sitting okay. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll grab our other one and get that in place over here. Again, you can see this little bung for the O2 sensor. Be careful not to catch that wire on it. You might also have to move your driver's side one to kind of get this in place. The exhaust does make it a little bit tight here, but we should be able to get this up and over. Now you're gonna see that they are kind of spread here. There's a little bit of wiggle room uh, laterally. Now to make sure that you have it lined up properly, you can go ahead and look in your kit and you're gonna find this bracket here. And you're gonna see, you should get these to line up just about like that. Um, and that way you know you have it lined up so you can put your center section in. Kurt has actually included this nice handy tool for our center locator and what this is going to allow us to do is actually have a hole set up to drill our pilot hole to make sure we have when our hole saw goes in a perfect hole for the receiver. So make sure you put this in place before actually raising it up and what we're going to be doing is between our two brackets that we have there those carriage bolts are going to slide in here so I recommend having an extra set of hands as this is kind of heavy and we're going to be threading two of our flange nuts on each side to those carriage bolts just loosely to kind of get it attached but that should hold it in place so we'll get this loaded up And you may have to kind of finagle a little bit working around some of these clips. If your trim shield pops out like ours did, make sure you put that in place. So it is gonna be tricky. I think the best spot is to raise this end up over the exhaust and square it into this bracket. And from there you can kind of move this along. And you may need to move your brackets uh, that you had up earlier just to kind of gain that space. You can see we're hitting kind of on this heat shield on the um, gas tank. So it is a pretty tight fit here, but just like that, we should be able to get it in place. So again, make sure your trim, uh, your plastic trim tool there is actually in place. And then from there, try to get your carriage bolts to line up. So I'm gonna just kind of feed our carriage bolts down in through these holes and you're going to want to make sure that they're sitting in their actual squares there. That way we can actually get these spinning. So I have these two in place. I'm going to go ahead and just put a few threads on here so that's going to hold. And I'll do the same on the other side. Now if you're having trouble aligning them, you can actually look underneath and see where that carriage bolt sits in the hole. You may need to lift this up to kind of square it just a bit, but they should drop through. Now I've noticed my carriage bolt kind of popped up as we were actually 
lifted in place. So again, you may have to kind of work at this top portion to drop that back in. And then just kind of playing around with that, I was able to get it to drop in. And so now with those threaded through, I'm gonna raise this up just a bit and get these started. So now we're actually going to take our latch plate that we use for that kind of alignment and we're going to want to grab our carriage bolts. These are going to be the longer ones, not the shorter ones we put up top. You're going to want to grab four of those as well as four flange nuts. So what I'm going to do here is just kind of get some of these aligned. And then you may need to move it around and adjust as necessary but that should feed all the way through so I've got this one through and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just loosely thread my flange nut on there that way I can hold in and we can work on the other holes okay you may need to kind of adjust around again to kind of get these to shoot through here let's see if I can't get the center one in here first go so yeah you may need to lift the center section to kind of get that play that we need to get those to shoot through and I would just hand tighten these enough to where you still can move all this but also that square portion of the carriage bolt is kind of cinched in that hole that way it doesn't back out uh, it's gonna make it a little bit easier later on when we tighten it so now that we have these four on our actual latch plate we can go ahead we're gonna grab our other hardware and we're gonna be bolting them through here. So now on the back side, we're gonna be taking our shorter uh, carriage bolts here, and there's gonna be three holes that will line up. So again, you may have to raise that center section to kind of line that in place. And then same thing, we're gonna have our flange nuts. So just go ahead and hand tighten those on. We're going to be putting up our frame plates here. I'm going to start with the driver side. Now on the passenger side, those are going to sandwich in between the frame, whereas this one gets a little bit different. There's this actual strap here that we'll be using. But first things first, get your hex bolts ready with a split washer and a flat washer. You're going to need six of them. And these are going to be going up into the actual braces that we put up earlier. They have weld nuts on them. So we're going to get this one in place first, and then we'll get those in place just simply hand tighten these in. So the driver's side, you're gonna want this long one here, and we're simply going to slide this on the outside of the frame rail. So I'm gonna take our plate and slide this up, and I'm gonna just align these holes with our bolts up into the two that are up there. Now you may need to move this little fender liner here just a bit to get it in place. Now on the passenger side, we're gonna grab this piece. This has the kind of arch here, and this is gonna go on the outside of the frame rail, and this will be facing the back. So same thing, have your hardware ready, and go ahead and hand thread that up. Now we'll put our other plate on the inside here. Now just be careful, because you do have this O2 sensor wiring right here. So if you move the actual whole assembly back, you should gain enough access here to get these all aligned without causing any impact on there. Now all of this hardware we want hand tight and the reason being is to really get this thing centered up. We would need everything loose because you're gonna have to adjust to get some of the other hardware in place. So just enough to hold it should be fine. Now you're gonna wanna grab your long carriage bolts here and we're actually gonna thread these through our bracket and that way we can actually sandwich this up using this strap. So this is gonna go obviously behind uh, or in between the frame and that wiring harness. That way it's not cinching that down. And then we're just gonna simply feed our carriage bolts through. And then there's also gonna be these pipe spacers. Now there is one longer one and then four of these shorter ones. So make sure you take the shorter one. And that's just gonna create that gap that we need. And you can go ahead and thread 
your flange nut on. And the top is going to be the same. Now there are some burrs on these, so just be careful. They can be kind of sharp. So either wear some gloves or just be careful on those edges. Now on the passenger side, you're gonna see these long carriage bolts. There's gonna be one that's slightly longer than the others. That's gonna go with the longer tube of the bunch. So when putting these in, this is gonna be the towards the front of the vehicle. So make sure that the long one is actually there. And the other two are going to be vertical of each other. So just make sure you have the proper hardware in the right place. So starting with these shorter carriage bolts, we'll just simply put our pipe spacer there. Same as we did on our driver's side. We'll just hand tighten this on. We'll do the same for that top one as well. We're now using our long carriage bolt. This is going to go in this forward one here. Now on the driver's side here, there is gonna be a hole on the side that we're gonna need to thread a bolt through. So we'll be needing to pass a spacer block as well as a carriage bolt through there in order to get the stud to go on the outside. So it's gonna, the bolt's gonna live inside the frame rail and the threads will be sticking out to get that outside plate. Now, in order to feed that in there and get it into our hole on the outside frame, we're gonna be using a fish wire. So we're going to be taking our fish wire here and you're going to see there's a coiled end and that's where the bolt's actually going to thread onto so we can actually pull it through here. Now we do have this still loose so that way we have this gap and what I'm going to do is I need to feed this through here as this plate is actually going to sit through the middle here. So it's going to get a little bit tricky but just a little patience we will make this work. So I'm just going to kind of put this up in place and I'm just using my finger here to align not only our bracket uh, our washer and that hole in the frame, but get that coiled and fed through there and that's going to hold that washer in place for us. Now I'm going to feed upwards. There's going to be a gap kind of in the corner there by the fuel tank. Um, it's going to be an oblong hole that's pretty large. So go ahead, you're going to get your fish wire. You're going to want that coiled end to feed out of there. So once this is fed through, I go ahead and I actually bend my other end just so this won't pull through on accident as we're attaching our hardware. So we're going to be taking our spacer block and this is just going to create that square for the carriage bolt to bite onto. Um, we can actually take this and feed this through and you can actually drop it in that hole. It's going to be a little tricky to feed it in but let's get some angle here just kind of a tight spot but having your wire just hold that other end if you can and you can kind of move it around and a little helpful tip here you're going to see this has a longer side that's actually going to be easier to feed in first um, it gives you a little more angle to work with with that wire being there so see if you can't slide that in like that push it in and now I'm going to go ahead, I'm holding the other end again so it doesn't pull through. We're going to take our carriage bolt and you're going to want to just slightly thread that on there. It should go pretty easy. Now with that threaded on we can go ahead and feed the bolt through. And it's going to be pretty tight here so you may have to kind of put the actual rounded edge in first and it'll kind of align itself as you pull it in but you're going to want that to drop in the hole as well. Now this wire bundle here is going to kind of hinder it a little bit getting it in the way so you may have to move that as you can. Now this is going to get tricky because the hole is not particularly large so you almost have to get that carriage head in at an angle. So let's try to get that as 
so I fed the threads kind of up and that way we can kind of slide that carriage bolt end in and then from there go to your other side you may have to kind of jostle this around a little bit to kind of get it to all align but you should have your threads pull through not only that spacer that we put in there but also the spacer we fed the wire through so play around with this until you get your threads through the hole and I suggest do not pull this too hard because if uh, it does come detached from that fish wire, it's going to get pretty tricky to make this work. Now this portion does, it's going to take some patience, but really make sure you're not pulling too hard on here because if this falls in, uh, it's going to be kind of make the installation quite a bit more difficult. Now you can see some of mine already came off. And really, once I got pretty close to the hole, I kind of had to play around here just to kind of move it around so it wouldn't be catching. But what we'll do here now is put pressure on the carriage bolt so it doesn't fall back in. And just make sure you're holding on tight to that. I just kind of put upward pressure like that, just enough to get a couple threads put on there just to hold it in place. Now there's going to be the similar process on the other side. So again, we're going to do the same thing. Again, this is one of those steps that can really uh, turn it into a much longer install and you may have some bolts rattling around in your frame. So just be very careful while doing this. Now this passenger side is going to be a little bit different as the large hole that we're going to feed our carriage bolt as well as our spacer is actually going to be behind this plate. So I've gone ahead, I actually took out two of our long carriage bolts, the one that's here as well as one on the other side. Now this can kind of still stay in place, but I'm going to drop this down and that's going to give us access to this large hole here. So we're still going to feed our fish wire on our carriage bolt and we're going to simply Get this to drop in. Sometimes you gotta go at a different angle. Like, just kind of work at it and there we go. Next thing I'll do is I'm gonna actually keep my spacer block in. And so this will also need a little oblong spacer here. So since that's gonna sit between our plate and that frame rail, I'm going to put that in place and then what I'm going to do is actually raise this up as this is going to feed through here so you can take your wire and actually pull it through the hole on that and as we kind of get this up in place try to pull straight out and get that thread pulled through and again you want to play around with the plate too to make sure that that hole's lining up and once all the line, just put some straight pressure on it and we'll get this pulled through. And I've actually kind of pulled the plate back here a little bit just so I can see the thread. And then we'll get that fed through our middle spacer if we can. There we go. And now, kind of holding tension so we don't lose that bolt back in there again. We'll raise this up. You can actually pull the wire, kind of keep it in place. So now that we have that fed through again, just be careful that you don't lose this in the frame rail. So just slightly pull this off. Now I also recommend these fish wires are sharp little wire, so careful with your eyes, maybe wear some safety glasses while doing this whole process. Go ahead and take your flange nut and get that tightened on. Okay, now with that in place we can go ahead and we can actually put our long, long carriage bolts with those pipe spacers back in place. So now we're going to be tightening these down with a 15 16 socket and there is a sequence that we need to follow. So First thing we're gonna to wanna to do is the four vertical ones here, and then we have our seven horizontal. So our center section's gonna be first, and then we're gonna be moving to our six hex bolts, and our hex bolts are gonna be the ones that have actually fed up here, and you're gonna have them on the other side as well. And then moving from those, we're gonna do the frame attachment 
plate fasteners and those are gonna be the ones we fish wired in. And then we'll go ahead and we'll do the remaining after that. So let's get our center section tightened up and move our way through the rest of the hardware. Alrighty, so I'm gonna be tightening these up. Now you want them snug as to kind of cinch everything together, but you really don't have to go nuts on them with an impact or anything like that, as we're actually gonna go back with a torque wrench to make sure they're all at the proper setting. So for now, just get these tightened up. Now you may get to this point here with these center ones where it's gonna be hard to get a socket on here just because our receiver opening's there. So you may need to swap over to a wrench and get those tightened down. The rest of them look as if we should be able to get to them fairly easily, but there may be spots that get tight that you'll have to swap over to some hand tools. Now something else you're going to want to keep in mind while tightening this all up is it does have a little bit of play, but you're going to want this centered up as much as possible because once it's actually bolted down tight, you want that to be centered up in your bed. So do take your time to make sure that it is lined up before really cinching it down hard. So now we're going to go back with our torque wrench and we're going to torque down the hardware to the manufacturer's recommendations in the instruction manual. Now. There is two different torque settings for our hardware, so we have our half inch is gonna be different than the 5 8 So definitely make sure that you are making, making those torque settings specific to those bolts. Now, if it does get to a point where you're in a tight spot, there's actually a little crow's foot style uh, adapter that they've included in the kit, which is really nice, because a lot of times with uh, your under bed, there's gonna be some spots that get really hard to torque down, but you wanna make sure it's also torqued down properly. Now, if you don't have a torque wrench, we have these here at E-Trailer. Uh, generally, you can rent them at an auto parts store, but this is definitely an important step to make sure that it's gonna hold up over time, not to ha have too much stress on the bolts, but also not come loose. So going in the same fashion as we tightened them down before, we're gonna go ahead with the torque wrench and get these all tightened down to spec. Now, these two obviously are gonna be pretty hard to get to as they were even to tighten. So we are gonna use our special tool here. So we'll just put this on the end of our torque wrench. And this is gonna allow us to get that torque setting still and get this tightened down. Now with this method, it does rotate, so you'll have to stop every once and again and start back a different rotation here there we go and continue on until you have that torque down properly also to make sure this tool doesn't get hung up on this lip and give you a false uh, torque rating all right now we can do our other one with the same way we just tightened that one Now with everything tightened and torqued down to spec, we can go ahead and make our pilot hole using that template. And that's gonna allow us to find the hole on the top of the bed and be able to get the hole saw in there to make it fit. So very carefully, you're gonna wanna route your drill up there. And we're just using a 316, so just kind of a pilot hole. Make sure you're centered there. And then go ahead and make your hole. So you can see our pilot hole here. It's nice and centered up with this bed rib. So now we're gonna go through with our three and a quarter inch hole saw with our pilot bit here. And we're just gonna enlarge that hole. Now this can catch occasionally. So I suggest standing up and using your ankles or some sort of leverage to hold this so it doesn't pull your wrist around and just kind of work slowly on this. Take your time. So with a little bit of patience, we've gotten this out. Now what we're going to do here, we want to go back and get any of this flashing kind of sanded down. So I just have a small file just to kind of smooth these edges. And something that's nice in this kit is they actually include a little bit of rubber to go around this edge so it isn't exposed metal. But we're going to take a little bit of precaution. So let's go ahead and file this down first. 
So now I've got these burrs sanded down. I'm gonna go ahead and just vacuum up our metal shavings here. So now we're gonna go back under the truck and we're gonna need to either drill a pilot hole here for our safety loops, or if you have a punch and you wanna just make a dimple there, uh, that's gonna help see up top where we need to drill out. Now, if you do have a bed liner on your truck, I suggest drilling because sometimes those dimples are kind of hidden underneath that bed liner. So do your best to square this up as much as possible to the center of that hole. Go to your belt center. Make sure you're drilling perpendicular to the bed. Go ahead and make your pilot hole. Now go ahead and repeat that on the other three. So now with our pilot holes, I'm gonna go back with my step bit and I have my U-bolt here. I'm gonna use this as reference. And once I drill holes out that I think are gonna be close to this, I'm gonna test fit this until for sure we're able to slide this up and down. Now, sometimes they'll get caught up on the threads. That's okay, but you want it to be able to slide pretty freely on the smooth portion. So go ahead and enlarge these. So now that it's enlarged, I can go ahead and that drops in pretty nicely. So let's go ahead and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I've gone ahead and I've actually filed down those rough edges before dropping these in. And you're gonna to wanna to put a little bit of clear spray paint or whatever color you may have that matches your vehicle. And that way that exposed metal doesn't become rust over time. Now these are gonna be spring loaded and the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna place our flat washer on here first followed by our spring. We have one more washer. And then we're gonna follow that up with our nut. I'm gonna just get this hand tightened on here. Uh, but once we get the other three, all we'll have to do is go back and tighten this down until it's flush with the bottom of the bolt. And I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the same process on the other three. Now we'll go back and tighten these nuts up until they're flush with the bottom of the bolt. And then our safety ch chain loops are going to be done. So now we're almost done underneath the truck. I just went ahead and I put our wire bracket back in place with our 10 millimeter bolts. And now we need to put up our spare tire. And then that should just about finish the install of your gooseneck. Now, the final step and finishing touch of this is there is some rubber here that you simply put on the edge. Uh, now, I've found over time that these tend to fall off, especially when you're loading in and out quite often. A lot of other underbed kits really don't come with this. So it's up to you if you want to put that on there just for a little cleaner look, uh, but it's not required by any means. Now, now's a good time. Check to make sure safety chain loops are actually functioning properly. and. Here you have the install of your gooseneck. And that was a look and install of the Kurt Underbed OEM style custom gooseneck on a 2022 GMC Sierra 2500 HD.